to call the uh, special meeting December, on December 5th here for the uh, uh, Board of Ethics to order. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Ted Carlson? Here. Terrence Kelly? Here. David Nesbitt? Here. Keith Silver? Here. Steve Strong? Here. D. Ennis, Deputy Municipal Attorney, is here, and Linda Richardson, Administrative Hearing Officer, is also here, and Barbara Jones, Municipal Clerk, is here as well. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Any, any opposed? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Um, shall we dispense with the minutes of the previous meeting? To the do that to the next meeting. So moved. Yes. Second. Okay. Um, we don't have anybody necessarily to be heard on the agenda. I do see um, two individuals here that may be uh, discussed. Any special orders of business or executive session at this right now? Not that we're aware of. So no unfinished business. We were actually able to finish our unfinished business last time. We'll move on to um, request for advisory opinion 2013-1. We've actually made this all the way to December with only one advisory opinion. I still opinion. haven't done it. <laughs> so we have in front of us. Um, uh, Keith, do we know it has confidentiality been waived on this one? Go ahead. Is this this was referred by the clerk's office, is my understanding. Is that true? Um, I, I can give you a little bit of background. What happened is um, Assembly Council Julia Tucker was presented with this issue, and she wrote a memorandum to the assembly member, which I provided you by email. And in that memo, Julia Tucker recommended to the assembly member that he should ask the clerk to request an advisory opinion from the Board of Ethics um, because the issue is capable of repetition and it had more than, it ha impacted more than just that assembly member. So the assembly member responded to Ms. Tucker saying, yes, please proceed in that fashion. So um, I did speak to Ms. Tucker about confidentiality and she indicated that the memorandum and the draft legislation that I provided to you was not confidential. So um, uh, that is where I am at. <laughs> well, we asked the requester. Well, that would be she's the requester. Yeah, I think you're the That's requester. Correct. Correct. So, 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 oh yeah. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, through the chair, the, the obvious person involved in this is Mr. Bush. And do you have any problems with confidentiality? I've got no problems at all. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Does that mean that we would never have to go into either executive or special session? Well, right. I think Z can answer that better Very than I might. Very but, unlikely. This okay. is but all for public yeah. issue, public yeah. forum. But for deliberations, you can still go into executive session if you. Yeah. Not for advisory opinion. I don't think oh, okay. it's, it's an advisory opinion, and I, I doubt this is going to be matters of defame or any of that kind of your normal reasons for deliberative privilege. Okay. So, so just to be clear, so we're we, no, we're waiving confidentiality. Correct. With this one, okay. We're assuming it has been waived. We're yes. not waiving it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the board, I'd like to ask first before we go continue. Uh, I have a, a personal acquaintance with uh, Assemblyman Birch. And although this is not as a result of an action that he has taken, meaning he has not, so far as we're aware, violated any you know ethics rules, he hasn't taken any money from somebody else or anything. We're not looking at that type of, of, of uh, decision. This is not a you know notice of potential violation. This is a notice of advisory opinion. Um, but I at least need to put it to the board so the board can decide as to whether I need to recuse myself from from this uh, discussion. Do you share any financial interest? No. Uh, you're not in business together? 
No. No common members of the household? No. No family in ties? No, no. Do you feel that you can be impartial and remain impartial? Uh, yes. Do you think that a reasonable person who is fully familiar with your relationship with Mr. Birch would think of you as being impartial in making this decision? A reasonable person. Reason, yeah. Uh, so yes. Joe Q. Citizen out in the parking lot, we bring him in, we fully inform him about the relationship that you have, and then we say, we're going to let Keith continue to participate. What do you think that citizen would think? Would they say, oh, I think that's more or less okay, or would they object? Well, if you're talking to a reasonable person. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. A reasonable, uh, reasonable uh, person. That's right. I, don't, I don't think they would object, but I still felt it was necessary to at least put it out there and put it on the minutes. I'm okay with it. Uh, Are you okay with it? Uh, I just wanted to point out, even though Mr. Birch is the originator of the issue, the the question that's been the questions that have been posed to you involve all of the assembly members. So I wanted to make sure that that's clear that the issue is not specific to Mr. Birch, which I hope helps resolve your right. Well, that conflict. was. It does help a little, for sure, yeah, because it's, it's not just Mr. Burks. <coughs> so, as I understand it, when you and I spoke last week um, off recording, there were three assembly people who were coming up for election in April. Not no, actually there were six. Six. <laughs> so, so the way the, the way the elections work is that, um, you know, we have the assembly members have three-year terms. So it's um, five, six, mayor. And we're back to five, six, mayor. Mark, do you, do you, do you happen to know, like off the top of your head, or, or, or could quickly calculate, when would be, if you wanted to move the election from April to November, in what year would you move it such that it would not affect any of the current people on the assembly, that they, in other words, that they would all be termed out by the time they got yeah, to that point. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. And, but um, people would be termed out eventually, and that's how so there is some year in the future where you could move it from April to November, and it would not, in essence, extend the extending the terms of any of the current city people. Well, there is one, I believe, Amy Dombrowski just came on this past year, right? She's been there less than a year. So we just project her out. If she could stay up to nine years, nine. that's your maximum possible. Because she's the youngest, and then you go out from there. But, but you'd also have new people elected that would then. Uh, but they wouldn't be voting term, on this one decision. They wouldn't be voting decision. on this particular decision. So if you yeah, did it right true. now, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, we'd have to calculate out. She would be yeah. the last one who could be potentially conflicted. But there are, there are two issues here. One, can Assemblyman Birch who is terming out completely, you know, he's on the ninth year, can he introduce the legislation, which we already went to the discussion with Assemblyman Traney earlier, that we all have the background on that. And then, assuming that he can, can the Assembly vote on it when you've got the majority of the Assembly can't vote? If we say, no, they can't, they, they wouldn't be able to vote. Yeah, it's a, it's a real, I think it's a real can of worms. Barb, do you know, does anyone know what's, what would be, it's, it would be extending the term for about six months, right? Ten months. Ten months. It, well. The, now, the, the legislation has changed. So the document that I sent to you with the original memo and the legislation attached, there's a, there's a new version. And that's why D said ten months, because... Um, th there was a change in the legislation, so you could. It, it, I mean, the. I think that question is, you know, sort of esoteric, and it gets. Well, the timing is, is, is I think, is esoteric. It's going to extend it one way or the other. Exactly. Right? That's exactly, exactly. Maybe, exactly. What is the annual salary of an assembly person? Um, it's approximately. It's twenty nine thousand and change. Did they participate in the PERS system? Are there retirement benefits along with it? Did you know? I do not know the answer to that, but yes. I assume so. They're yeah, municipal, we, we they're municipal employees. They can. 
or you um, can choose, or, or you can opt out. I've opted out, but you, you yes, sir, you know, you can. I don't mean to necessarily lead this discussion because I'm. So I guess I suppose the yeah. question, one question would be the um, <coughs> the code precludes <coughs> assembly persons, elected officials generally, from participating in official action in which they have a substantial financial interest. Um, so one of the tests, so we have our five uh, prong test, um, whether it, one, whether it's a substantial oh. matter under consideration, this is 035D. Um, whether it varies directly and substantially from the outcome of the official action, whether the financial interest is immediately immediate and known or conjectural and dependent on factors beyond official action, whether the financial or private interest is significant monetarily, whether the financial or private interest is a type which is generally possessed by the public or a large class of people to which the elected official or household member belongs. And so it seems to me that one of the questions then is, do we think this is, so let's suppose if it's six months, let's say if you know, it's $29,000 a year, six months basically to extend someone's uh, half a year, and that's you know, 15, about $15,000 that they, they would not be eligible to get otherwise. If it's 10 months, it's even more than that, right? It's gonna be probably closer to $20,000. Uh, that strikes me as, I would call that substantial. I mean, we're thinking teachers who take gifts for more than $50. Um, it strikes me that that's substantial. If it is, then it looks to me like the rest of these, to me, in my opinion, the rest of these criteria do fit. Um, it's directly related to the official action in question. By definition, moving the election date will extend the terms of the assembly members. Um, is, it, uh, is it a unique interest not held by the public at large or a large, a large class of people? Absolutely, it's just assembly members who would be affected by it. Uh, is it conjectural or is it direct? It's not conjectural at all, again, by definition. If the uh, term, if the election day is moved, the term is extended. People will accrue the extra salary. So, uh, so to me, the only the only question I had, so I wanted to ask Barbara about salary, was that would this count as sort of like a substantial financial interest? My sense, if you look, my sense, if you look at D, uh, 035D, it looks to me like it fits the rest of those criteria. Okay, now. So, go ahead. Well, I would think plain devil's advocate yeah. with, your, with your argument, and I'm not sort of dis necessarily disagreeing. Plain devil's advocate with your argument. If somebody else were to introduce this, would we then end up conflicting out the rest of the assembly, the six people that would have their, any of their terms, whether they, you know, stand, because they're standing for re-election, extended by six months. Yeah, I don't mind. And yeah, then, how, and then how, does, how does the assembly, you know, how do they, you know, function if, if we have like conflicting Again, I think, I think, I mean, I think Bart, I, mean, I, I, I came into this meeting thinking about just the, the potential three or so people. Yeah. I thought there was three who were going to be up for re-election. Right now it's six. Those people definitely are conflicted. But to be perfectly honest, if you think about it, every sitting assembly person who's voting on this is voting to extend their term of office. So they're voting on their own term of office, and they're voting to extend their own term of office with the salary that comes with it. That's, I mean, if that isn't a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. And so... Yeah, I think, I'm, I'm inclined to think, I'll just throw it out there so we can just go, I'm inclined to think the entire assembly is conflicted until the date. Uh, and if it's eight years down the line, then it's eight years down the line. But anyone voting to extend what will be their own term by six months is voting on their own <coughs> substantial financial interest, if you think it's a substantial financial interest. I think we've only been asked to uh, address Sponsorship. No, the it's uh, no. It, the, the no. memo has asked us to, to, to take yeah, there, there sponsorship issues. voting, well, there's and not just for the people being turned out, but, but she, for everyone. She has four issues. Yeah, I got that. Right. That's four, four distinct questions. So, well, but yeah. that, that's an interesting point. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make one tiny clarification, and it's really insignificant in the. But I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of this. It's not only, the ordinance wouldn't only extend the assembly members' terms because the election, the municipal election and elected officials, it includes the assembly, the school board, and the mayor. So all of those yeah, terms. Yeah, the LARSA members, everybody who's elected. But that's, but that's okay because those folks are not voting on their own terms, right? In other words, those folks are not voting to extend their own terms. Um, I, I just wanted to make that clear. I, I still either. think the question goes back to whether it's a, a small class or not, and I'm not sure that that makes it a large class, but I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Oh. But, Ms. McNeil, I just ask a quick question. 
question. Getting back to your point about the sponsoring of the bill versus the voting on the bill. Mm -hmm. Is, regardless of whether it's not in this memorandum, is the voting on the bill properly before us or is just the sponsoring of the bill properly before us? Is only the, is it possible that one, the sponsoring of the bill is the only part that's timely? Is it possible that procedurally the sponsoring of the bill is the only part that we have authority or jurisdiction to cover? And then, because I, I, I just want to make sure the cart doesn't get before the horse. So I think we should be very methodical in how we address what's before us. So, and being new, I'm not saying I know the answer is one or the other. I just want to put it out there that we ought to be very deliberate in how we go there. I think all of the questions are before you, but I think you don't want to get the cart before the horse. So I think you're right. Well, how has it changed the first time? Yeah. Was it moved? It was. Up it, the, instead of Julia instead Tucker of did the research, and I think it was included in the first memo that may have been provided to you. Is that and this my, is something Cubits? My memo? understanding is that what happened, there may be a little bit more information than that, and here's my understanding. Legislation was proposed in 1988. Yeah, that's, that's the memo from it, some of the It passed in 1989. It became effective in 1993. So it's it's different than a little different than what you're discussing. It it looks like five years. I'm wondering if they at that time they felt that that was the appropriate way of handling it was to move it out three years. Or four years, and is that their way? Is that the way that they got around this particular issue? Or was this not even raised at the time? Do we yeah. know at all? I'm not going to answer that. I don't think we know for sure, but that's certainly the um, uh, feeling. Is that the, the people? That's the uh, institutional story behind that. Is that's exactly what they did? Is they put it out for three years mm -hmm. uh, to mitigate the conflict? Right. But they still extended terms of assembly. Yeah, I, I don't know that. I well, haven't I mean, really what, investigated that. We, we got a, a dozen documents yeah. from the Senate Council just going to look at that. But I think if you if you think about it the way um, Linda Robinson suggested, remember, if, if you extended five years today, uh, Amy Dembowski is the, is the most new member, so she has she's in her first year, she has two years left. Even if you extended it five, she has to run again. So she's going to have to run again for this term. And so the, the public is going to have that advantage that when she runs for that second term, they're going to know that she's going to get extended. So that may have been why that that isn't a conflict for her to vote on it. Yeah, they're, they're putting it before the public. If they didn't like it, they can vote her out of office. So there's a, a check and balance. It's like you said, Dean. It's like a, a mitigation of the conflict. It's not an elimination of it, but a, a check on it, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, I think Linda uh, uh, was looking. I asked Linda to help step in this is a large issue. And I think, first of all, there's lots of sort of esoteric legal issues which the board should avoid. You know, there's charter requirements of three years, limitations of certification. Those are beyond this board's expertise. But um, Linda was looking at, there's a New York case that dealt with sort of this issue, and they talked about a higher duty to a democratic process. So, um, and a balancing of that with the conflict of interest. So there may be a conflict of interest um, that this board finds, but there may be a way to mitigate it. And as you all know, there's conflicts of interest. I mean, that's very common. The real duty uh, of the uh, employees and elected officials is how to manage that conflict. So I right. think that was a mitigation effort. Um, because it would seem to me that there, there should be a method of doing this that we should expand in the way of assembly accomplishing, unless there's another body or some other way of changing the date of the, I don't know of, a, of another way. If there's not another way, there should be a, a way of being, of that being allowed. It shouldn't be shut down. 
question is, like you say, how to uh, how to do it in a way that is um, least costly to the <coughs> appearance of impropriety or the impropriety itself, right? I'm not dismissing it. I'm just saying that, that we shouldn't you know, shut this down for some reason if there's a way of working around it. Would it be possible to have, for at least a year or two, would it be possible to have two elections? So you have an election day. Well, if those are April, if those are expensive. So I have a conflict of interest answering that question. No, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you know, the, 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 the reality is that the code anticipates an, an annual municipal election. As well, it says that we can have special elections. So there's no doubt that that's anticipated in the code, that, that there could be more than one election. So, if you were to speak to one of the things of your conflict, I actually, Commissioner, you know, Assemblyman Birch has done this for almost nine years. To me, the prospect of spending another six months waiting up until past midnight you know, on Tuesday night to deal with some of our esoteric issues within the Assembly, um, I, I don't know, after that long, I probably would think it would be more punishment than, than a benefit, but that's... Uh, but then that would be if somebody, you know, and I asked it before, if so, could somebody else introduce this this uh, legislation? He said yes. Yeah, well, but if we're going to just talk about sponsorship, but I, I think but the reason why I'm putting the cart with the horse is that I, I think to some degree it's the same issue. If people are conflicted out such that they can't sponsor, for the precise same analysis, they're going to be conflicted out from voting and deliberation as well. Right? I mean, and so that's a question of, yeah, yeah. do you think someone like Amy Dombrowski even is she conflicted out from sponsor? I mean, who else in the assembly is going to sponsor it? They, any of them, will be sponsoring legislation that will extend their own term of office. What if that's a that's a conflict of interest? And and I and you know, in the code, this this thing of like balancing it with the democratic process that sounds great, but the code does not provide that. The code does not say unless it can be accommodated by the democratic process, assembly members may not participate in the matters in which they have a significant plan. That's not what the code says. Would you have a problem if? They proposed a resolution asking for a referendum at the next election. Can I just say there's other people that need yeah. to speak? I'm and, sorry. And, but people need to raise their hands so it doesn't become a two person debate. So I know, Steve, no, no. You, you've yeah. been wanting to speak. Yeah, you go ahead. I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that just that's not how I like yeah. him. Go ahead. Well, I, I wasn't here when, when uh, the advisory opinion 2011 1 was, was written. And Terry. Signed it, but I'm assuming the, the whole board uh, discussed it. Yes. And you know, the, to me, this kind of lays out kind of the process, and it really places the. I mean, the recommendation pushes the deliberation of the voting and the conflict of that back to the assembly, while it leaves the, the sponsorship of the proposal to to us. So. You know, to debate the uh, the conflict of interest of, of voting when it hasn't even been entertained by the assembly, to me, seems a little premature. But the problem, I think, I'm getting ahead. Of I was going to explain yeah. that. I, I, I don't think that's true. What that was meant to be. The, um, the the genesis of that was that there's a code section that says that the, this board is not to second guess uh, the assembly's determination of a uh, of a conflict. Um, however, in a sponsorship situation, that's pre-assembly, right. right? So right. then it comes to us. It's right. a gap period. And I, and I understand that. What I'm getting at is we're debating a, a, a conflict of a vote that hasn't even occurred yet. But, but, but the reason that that question is before you is because the Assembly Council and the sponsor wanted you to advise them on this rather than allowing them to vote and violate the law and then end up before you because someone's filed an ethics violation. Yeah, but does the code cover uh, what, I mean, we, we've discussed this in, in some of our other meetings about conflict of interest and, and you know, making that present to the, whatever board you're on. Um, doesn't the code cover um, identifying to the other board members whether or not you have a potential conflict of interest, just like you did yeah. about right. 15 but minutes ago. In this particular case, the whole assembly is conflicted out. Well, I don't. I, I not don't. on the sponsorship issue, no, but potentially on the extension. Well, well then they have to deal with that yeah. at, at the assembly meeting. 
right now. Maybe they'll say, okay, none of us can vote, and then that'll be what it is. But I, I don't think we should debate uh, both. Well, except here's the, here's the problem. Here's how it's potentially really paradoxical that the person disclosing their conflict, the people who have conflicts that need to be disclosed, right. may not participate in the deliberation right. about whether their conflicts yeah. are substantial. Right. So, so it may well be that no one's allowed by code to even begin deliberating on the assembly yeah. about whether they're in violation right. of the code. Well, in which case, they're all badly exposed <coughs> to having notices of potential right. violation. And, 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 I I, and I understand that. I don't disagree right. with it. Right. But we haven't even allowed that to happen yet. No. I mean, we have, to, we have to be very specific about the focus of this particular issue for this particular board, right? I mean, whether, they're, whether they can't discuss it or not. They might all decide they can't. And then that, <coughs> that, then we might have to address that. But we well, have. But they're asking. You know, Barbara, as the clerk, is asking for advice ahead of time. Remember, they'll be covered by what yeah. we wind up saying, right? I mean, and so in some sense, they're, they're well, normally, covered. normally, and it's true. Normally, we punt this back to the assembly because yeah. we say that's. But there's a couple things that are very different about this case. One, this is not a particular assembly person coming before us about one conflict. This is the clerk coming to us because she perceives a potential, or Julie has perceived a potential systemic conflict potentially involving the entire board. And so on that matter, and that's gonna affect both the sponsorship question and the voting and deliberation question. If we say people are so conflicted out that they can't sponsor something, they most certainly are not also going to be able to vote and deliberate about it. Now, yeah, the assembly ultimately has final say about whether they think they're right. conflicted out or not, except that to sponsor, you sponsor something before the assembly begins Deliberating no, I, on it, I, right? I, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yes, Linda. <coughs> this conversation is kind of what I was talking about as far as structuring our analysis to make sure that we have our authority. So we clearly have authority to discuss the sponsorship. Our authority to discuss the voting on the bill is because of the concern that all of the assembly members would be conflicted out from the discussion of their own conflicts, and that's why that's referred here. So, and I, I, I think that's legitimate. We just want to get that on the record, and I think it has been. So, but does, does that allay your concerns? Mr. Chair, can I, uh, when you get a chance, can I make a comment? Sure, are you, are you done, Linda? Yes. <laughs> sure, Ted, you just have to raise your hand. <laughs> I've had it up for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, holding a beer on the beach doesn't count as having your hand raised. <laughs> okay. Um, you want me to make a comment now? By my, by my. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the, the, you know, if we rule that there is a conflict for, for Mr. Birch, then there's a conflict for every single uh, assembly person. Uh, the, the thing we need to consider, and I, I'm not familiar with it, what it is, there's been a lot of people that are running for, for election, and there's APOC rules as to when you can start running and this sort of thing, and, uh, and also with the clerk's office, and filing and stuff like this, and I don't know if that's going to make a difference for the people that have started campaigning for the uh, April election. Of, uh, of 2014, but the, the, the solution to this, and this happened once before when they moved it from November up to there, is if they held the, if you hold the April election as it was started, and then instead of increasing the time, have them vote on decreasing the time by five months and have the next election so there would be no conflict if you decrease uh, the time that everybody's going to be serving. Yeah, so yes. I, I think if if uh, if they allow this election in April to go through, then uh, and then sometime between then and and November, they can uh, have it and decrease the time instead of the. Uh, um, a three-year term, it's two years and, and uh, seven months or something to that effect. And then there would be no conflict. Uh, thank you, Ted. Barbara. 
I, I have two things, and I'm not going to answer that question because I think that there's a legal question in there. There's the issue is extending terms or truncating terms, and I'm going to leave that to legal. But Ted does um, make me think of one other thing. When they did this before, when you're sort of talking about mitigating or how do you avoid this conflict, they did it in a mayoral election year. So, so remember when I told you about the elections, we have six, five mayor. So that's when the terms got extended was during that mayoral election year. So none of them were up for election. So how many are, are getting elected in this April? Six. Okay, and then when April 15 hits? Five. Well, April 15 mayor. is mayoral. And then April 2016 is five. When right? you say six positions or seats are up for election, yeah. But one of those is Mr. Birch, so isn't it? So and he's termed out. It's and and my position is it's a seat. I don't. Okay. I'm not so looking for right. five other people besides a termed out member. Are up. And these are all assembly members. Well, well D, I'm going to clarify is that, that true? it is a seat. Yeah. Mr. Well, Birch is in the seat, but there are six seats that are up for election. Yeah, I, just, I understand we, that, but we can't, those, we can't, those, I'm sorry, but sorry, those but, five have a different, potentially, could have a different interest than Mr. Birch, and to, or a different level of conflict, because they're not turned out. That is, that is true, and I think that we, so, and the way the questions are structured, you know, well, I mean, we haven't even, and I didn't put this in the questions, but obviously Mr. Birch is turned out, the other five aren't, but what if one of them doesn't run for re-election? Then can that person vote? Is that so? So we can we can go on ad nauseum with all the pure permutations, and that's why I think Linda is correct that you need to structure this and start at the top with Mr. Birch's issue and then move through them. But the the point that I want to make, and I think that Ted is right when he's talking about APOC, is that if this happened during a mayoral election, no one would have to declare with APOC because there's no declaration. They, they don't, they're not a candidate that year if, the, if it was extended. And that's the way it happened the last time. I don't, like Dee said, I don't know if that's why it happened that way, but that is what happened. And, and, but I have to tell you, I'm totally confused by what you just said. Oh. And, and I, if I am, I would assume some of Okay, the, so just, I, I, just the, I think, that most of us are relatively uh, uninformed about election okay. time frames and certification and APOC. Okay. And and I guess I would suggest, do we need to know that? But if if what you said is important, I don't understand it. Um, I think Ted probably understands it and knows it better than I do. And so, um, Ted, was there something that that all I wanted to point out was that in a mayoral election year, I am thinking that the if there is a conflict, it it would be we wouldn't be discussing the same conflict because so let me just throw that out. This is not a mayoral. This April is not a mayoral. No. Right. We wouldn't okay. be because if it was a mayoral election, Mr. Mr. Birch's term would not be up. The other members' terms wouldn't be up. So it would be a different issue. That's what I oh, wanted okay. to point out. So Ted is going to have to take you back to the APOC issue if that is, if, if I contributed to some confusion there. I apologize. Oh, well, can, you want to get Ted's input? Oh, sure. Yeah. Ted, can you? Are you there, Ted? Yeah, go ahead. Well, do, did you hear Barbara talking about, did you discuss the APOC issue you brought up? I, but, but isn't there, yes, and, uh, but isn't there also a timing element as to, through the clerk's office, when you, when you, uh, when you can file and when you have to file for, um, for running, and you can't file ahead of time, uh, this sort of thing, when you run, and these people have already done this so it's not only APOC but it would also be through the clerk's office and I but I'm not I'm not sure just what what those dates are and and time element but okay. uh, um, the but if, if if this you're 
not advocating that the that the people vote on this. Are you? I I'm not advocating anything. <laughs> no, it would not be for position to advocate. I don't think so, anyone's advocating anything. So here here is what I will answer to Ted's comments about APOC. Um, an assembly member may state in to declare in uh, 2013 that they are running for assembly in 2014. So they can declare with the APOC now if they choose to. In 2014, they um, file their notice of candidacy with the clerk's office and there's a period, it's between um, uh, the end of January and the 1st of February. So it's, it's, a, it's a small window, um, like about the 25th-ish to the, to the 15th-ish of February. I don't know the dates exactly. When you file with the clerk's office, you must file your APOC papers. That is a mandatory requirement of filing. So you must file by about February, you know, 15th-ish. Um, that is mandatory with the clerk's office. You may file before that. So I think what Ted is telling you is that some people have already made a decision to run for re-election for the April election, even though they haven't filed that. And, and it's, a, it's not time yet to file with the clerk's office. But they don't know if they're going to get re-elected. That is very true. Right. So, so I, so, so I, Steve, so I, I got a question here. You know, I agree with what Linda said. It was we ought to kind of work our way down. But it looks like we're going to go to the end and work our way back, which is fine. Because I think if we can get to the resolution at the end, then we resolve the sponsorship issue. So maybe it's a simple one. I think, you know, as I'm sitting here kind of piecing out the calendar, Maybe the reason they they waited three years. If we if the implementation date was November two thousand and sixteen, then every seat would have been reelected by then. Yeah, and then there and then the people that are voting now, if they don't know if they're going to get reelected, so that, to me there's no conflict. They might want to get reelected, but there's no guarantee they're going to get reelected. And certainly, yeah, but, but certainly, Mr. Birch um, wouldn't have a, a conflict because he would be a year and a half or almost uh, two and a half years off the board. Right, but, so, but what it does is it, it, it extends everyone's current term. It six extends months. every <coughs> seat. It doesn't <coughs> extend a particular person. Because all those all those seats would have had a re election in April. Well before, no, no. before you implement it. Yeah, because they were in fourteen and fifteen. In fourteen, 14 we got sixty four. Oh okay, so, so but you're 16. talking about so the line it not doing it. So in other words, the, the current proposal is to do it this year. That well, so, so they can vote on the proposal this year, but, but the implementation would have to be uh, have years to be, down the line. You, right. And it, it needs to be past the date when all the seats would have stood for re-election. Because, because you can't assume that someone filling a seat, not like Amy Dombrowski, might not get re-elected. And, and, well, and I, will, I will say this much. If you extended it at least beyond where Mr. Birch would no longer be on the assembly, right. then Mr. Birch would no longer be conflicted right. out, at least in terms of sponsorship. But maybe part of addressing, you know, with all these different assembly members have a conflict on voting on the issue, if you do the implementation date past the effective date of these seats standing for re-election, well, then nobody be? has a conflict. Well, the rest of them will still have a conflict. Yeah, wouldn't they, they, still be maybe, they would be extending their current term. No, they're not extending their current not, not, I think it'd be 17, not 16. Okay, 17. So you make it 17. But at least you get the issue resolved, and there's no conflict. Well, but is that, does that serve, and this is a whole different issue, and it's actually the assembly kind of issue, that would serve the public interest to make a decision to change the election four years down the road? Well, they, they did it in 1988, two years yeah. down the road, or three years down the road. Right. That's what I'm saying. Of course, we're not making, the board's not making no. that decision. You're just right. saying whether there's a conflict now, under the current proposal that you don't believe is manageable, but one of your suggestions as to how to manage that conflict would be yeah. a, a recommendation. Yeah, right. yeah so, so maybe first we, we should say, yeah, I mean, we've got a current proposal here in this request for advisory opinion, so right. we should probably answer that, right? Given the current proposal, what do we think are people conflicted out? If you take a look, I mean, does everyone have to go through the analysis in, in 035D and, and just start 
ticking through and seeing, do we think, given the current, and then if we decide, look, under the current proposal, assembly person X, or maybe all of them is conflicted up, then maybe we can offer some helpful advice about how the assembly can both accomplish this public goal, but at the same time, remain consistent with the ethics code. Go ahead. And I think in line with what Lynn is saying, too, though, I really do think it's important to distinguish between personally, that to, or to explain why we don't think it's important to distinguish between a, termed out, a potentially termed out assembly member, non-termed out assembly members, um, that those are, that, that we, if we, we should explain why we think that, think it is or is not important. Uh, I, I'm going to echo Dee and Linda as well, and the way the question is said to you, you can use the analysis that, um, um, Commissioner Kelly is suggesting, but it needs to be to answer the, the first question. And uh, I agree with Steve, you may have gone on it from the back, back end, but now we're back to the beginning. And then you just need to walk through the first question with the analysis that Terry used and then yeah, maybe march I'm missing, through those questions. I'm missing, uh, missing this. I got so much paperwork. Okay, let me get you um, a new one here. I, I pulled all, I printed all the stuff off and I'm missing yeah. questions, I guess, because. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's the yeah. one. Yeah, I, I kept top. telling you I was going to email it to you, but it wasn't done until this well, morning. I did, I did print out what you emailed, but I was looking for no, the questions, that, actually. No, that just came this morning. It never got emailed to you, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's why I'm missing it. Right. So number one includes two questions, right? The first question is about sponsorship, and right. it's about an assembly person who's otherwise termed out, right? So an assembly person who would otherwise be termed out and ineligible to serve beyond April 1st, the April 1st election, have a substantial financial or private interest that would conflict with the assembly member's sponsorship of the proposed legislation. So let's just stop there. So we've got someone who's termed out. Is it a conflict of interest for them to propose to sponsor legislation that would in that, you know, that would move the election date later in the year and, in essence, extend their term. Since that assembly member is here, should, you, should we just, just ask his opinion of that? What was, what's the feeling of the board? Uh, well, I, I think that they're asking us. Well, I, I, I think, well, I think we'll maybe have. it's, uh, our chair, maybe it, the question is, does he have any additional insight or information to offer that might be helpful for us to consider. So it's not his opinion, but does he think there's any other information of which we should be aware, being that this is in our area of expertise, okay. selection? Yeah, we should, we should invite him to participate, I suppose, if now is an appropriate time. Do you, you understand what we were talking about? I, I absolutely do. I'll okay. tell you what this is all about. This is about this chart right here. Okay. Vote, if I might, um, and this is basically a result of the this is the election results that are posted on the municipal website, and it represents from 1991 to 2013. Historically, the turnout in April, when it was changed uh, it, it, in April, is about 20 percent for non-mayoral races. For assembly races, with our for mayoral races, it bumps up to about 30 percent plus or minus. In 2004 and consistently across this time period, the state and federal elections, which are held on the first Tuesday after the first Monday of November, have run 50% plus, okay? In 2004, we actually contracted with the state to do two bond issues for school bonds in 2004, and the results were 52% turnout. My view is that the public is better served by pushing the election, election from April to November irrespective of the, the financial remuneration is uh, you know secondary when you look at the, the benefits and the merits of a 50% turnout for municipal elections when this last election we had maybe 20% 20 plus or minus very close to 20 so in my view the and you can't truncate terms I looked at the in the past and I also looked up uh, contemporaneous uh, news articles uh, from 89 and there's actually a, a push to actually I mean it wasn't uh, uh, um, the reason it was just to secure votes. In other words, it was a political decision on <coughs> the six votes. It, it takes six votes on your body to, to initiate this change. And you know, my view is let let the voters make a decision at the polls on on the merits of you know if, if I ever uh, you know go to additional office or future office or if anybody else in the assembly, you know, let the voters make that decision on the merits of the case. And and, and you know, it's what.
whether or not it, it looks like assembly members are, are you know, doing this for you know selfish reasons rather than public interest. I think the public interest is better served by high voter turnout, which you would achieve by a November election. I, that's that's my objective in in sponsoring this and bringing it forward, and with the uh, with the assistance assistance of the uh, municipal uh, clerk and the assembly. And when we when we look at the next section after D is E, I mean, is under public interest. Elected officials shall place the public interest above any financial or private interest when taking official action. And I listen to a little bit of talk radio. This is this particular subject, not regardless of who's voting, but that people that you get a lot more participation in the November election than you do in the April election. Which is Go beyond. Ahead. Go ahead. It's not necessarily our issue. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and it would be extremely relevant if the municipal code told us we must weigh the private interest against the public interest. But that's not what the code says. We could give him, you know, assume he has the highest of all possible intentions and the best of all possible motives, and just treat that as a given. That, But then the question becomes, despite the best intentions and despite the highest motives, is there still an ancillary, substantial private interest? What do people think about that question? So like looking at one through five in 035D, um, do you think, beginning with Mr. Birch, I mean, is there, would him sponsoring uh, an ordinance that has the effect of extending his term six to ten months, depending on which proposal, um, would that satisfy uh, criteria one through five, making it a substantial financial interest? Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's any question, and, and frankly, I don't think there's any question whether it's termed out or whether the person, I think that realistically, there's no way around it. Right. And I know that you mentioned this at the very beginning, but you can't. I think that what, where we, where we are going to be most effective with is, is with our recommendations and suggestions, how we can help the assembly figure this out. Maybe it means having an, uh, an effective date several years out. I don't know that yet, but I, I I'm kind of jumping ahead. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, yeah, but uh, I'm jumping that's ahead. That's my feeling. But honest, whether it's turned out, whether it's eligible to run, or whether it's uh, you know midterm, I don't think it makes any difference. I don't think you can get around. So it. for for. Spot. But I'm going to encourage you to still answer yeah. them. Yes, of course. Keep, so keep going. So here's my recommendation for the sponsorship. It's really all you need to do is change. Uh, Mr. Birch has has no. I think we could say um, no to all these. Um, The other way of getting so, around it, of course, would be that, and I don't know if this is even allowable, if, if Mr. Birch were willing to not be paid for that extra period of his term, that would also remove the financial I'm interest. not sure I want to get into that. I think, I think. Just throwing out. No, no, no I understand that, what you're saying. That, I think and that, if we, that's if, fine by me. I will do a pro bono. I think this is important yeah. for the community. Right. And I think that's, that's, that's why I'm it's, that's it's, ultimately, it's ultimately so the, the way yeah. the code lays it out, <laughs> even though it uses the words financial and personal yeah. interest, it lays out clearly the, the interest that question has to be significant monetary right. interest. And that would be a sponsorship issue. But then, of course, we get to the voting issue. And do you parse out when the extension would occur for each seat? And when they would take their pro bono six months, I, that, mm -hmm. they, I'm taking what you're suggesting to the logical conclusion. I understand you're answering the very first question, which is the sponsorship issue. But I see that becoming increasingly difficult as far as our analysis of the issue. It would seem as though one way of approaching this analysis would be, okay, sponsorship for Mr. Birch would eliminate the, uh, the potential or the we were gonna, it's not potential, it's potential right. conflict if he's no longer he's, eligible to run. The sponsorship he's, conflict. Right, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then to the next one, okay, what's the answer to whether an eligible to run for the next term? Well, for these people, it would be after the term has expired and be 
before they run for the next election in the midterm, right? So the analysis is each person who comes up for the conflict, the conflict is then eliminated or at least mitigated past the next election date. Well, and then oh, it leads us to our recommendation. At least one recommendation could be, you know, that it we might not be that hard. Every yeah, assembly right. person voting on, on this particular matter, if the matter were to pass in its sure. current form, right. it would be, boom, this year we're going to extend, we're going to push the election date back six to ten months. Sure. Um, every If every assembly if we person were to option. say, I'm willing for that six yeah. to ten months to take no salary, it's going to be true for all of them. It's actually well, so Barbara, in some sense it's Barbara, Barbara has been trying to get into it. Barbara's actually That, that, yeah, I know. I know. that I question that. is not before you. Right. I know. And as Mr. Birch said, you have an option of being in PERS or not. And you cause all of these little ripples. They're em they are municipal employees. And I am going to ask you not to address that question because it is not before you, and I do not think that, I, I think it, it's, just, it's just not well, before you, and it would be inappropriate to discuss that, because, may I address? wait, I'm but sorry, then the ahead. next question is, the only issue, as Linda said, it's not just a financial interest, the standard is financial or private interest, so you have to address both of those. No, right? the standard, with the, with yeah. the, uh, criteria four is whether the financial or private interest is significant monetarily. So the code cashes those interests out in terms of money. I, 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 well, I think that one way of addressing it, I, I think it's an interesting academic question whether it can be actually implemented in reality, right? So, but, but, right, but, but Mr. Kelly raises an interesting analysis question. Right? I mean, because what we're thinking about doing is proposing recommendations on how to address this conflict. Whether they're practical or not, it doesn't eliminate necessarily the, the benefit of the exercise of going through that analysis because what we're doing is we're analyzing very, very carefully the terms articulated in the code. So it may end up being that the one practical solution is this, but we're trying to make a point. We're trying to help the assembly address conflicts. And and with a strict analysis, that's where you come up with as an alternative, even if it doesn't make sense. Okay. So well, and, and I would and I, and I guess and my and my goal is also a little bit more practical. My my hope would be that we can say to the assembly because someone might say, in fact, I think this has already been said two or three times today in this meeting. Well, then we're just tying the assembly's hand and we're making this hopeless for them. No, what's hopeless is this particular proposal creates that's right paradox in which everyone's conflicted out. But it doesn't have to be done this way. That's right. If the public is served by moving the election to November, it doesn't have to happen this fall, That's right. this year, in which everyone is voting on extending their own term and extending their own salary. We've had it in April for, for decades now. If ethical governance means that we move it to November, but we wait a few years to do that, then you know the assembly's hands is not, is not tied. There is a middle. There is a middle way between doing it in a way that violates the code. And certainly, I mean, look, what are citizens going to think when they see the assembly voting to extend their own terms? That's right. right? Uh, there's a middle way between doing it immediately, even if for the best of intentions, doing it immediately but violating the principles of ethical government, and saying the assembly has no hope. It can do nothing about this. There are middle ways, or at least I hope there are middle ways yeah. that we can. No, I, I think the way that this is, I'm sorry, the way this is currently written is just not possible to get around the conflicts in the code. You can't do it. That doesn't mean though that there's not a recommendation that would work or that would that would fill the perch. I'm is sorry, it? you need to extend your meeting if you would please. I noticed oh, it. Just we are we are at eleven o'clock by the way, and I can extend no later than eleven thirty. Is that work with everybody else? Yeah. I will need to leave around eleven. I have class at 11. So, so, when is the next assembly meeting? December 17th. So, we, we might have a possibility of having another meeting be, before this. We can think about this. When you told me about this Friday, I, I recognize that we were going to have a meeting just like this because I saw the conflicts at that point. And we may need to sleep on this. 
but go ahead, Steve. Well, I, I think the and did we extend it? Have we extended it? Or oh, we did, it, did, it, did we need some votes? Yeah, second. Okay. There are no objections. No objections. So I, I think we solved the sponsorship <coughs> issue by by pushing the the implementation date to November fifteenth because Mr. Birch can sponsor it because he's not extending this time. So I think that's a, a, a good recommendation. Not exactly. I, I don't think probably something that he's looking for, but you know, following the code that solves that sponsorship issue. I mean, no one can can debate that because he's sponsoring something that doesn't affect him. So he has no personal interest in it. Do we have a state election on November fifteenth? Doesn't matter. We're going to have an, uh, We're going to have a, what he's proposing is a okay. municipal election every November. Is what he's proposing. Yeah. 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 So, the, we and, and that's a, a mayoral uh, election in November. And then I would recommend then that that would then give six assembly members, I believe, the ability to vote because all of them uh, will be uh, 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 they're voting on something that is past the end of their current term, and you can't assume that those other five are going to be. They may believe in their mind they're going to be reelected, but they might not be. So they're voting. It's kind of like yeah, I know a, current, a current Congress yeah. can't vote themselves a pay raise. Right. But heck, how many? What's the reelection rate for Congress? Yeah. They are voting themselves a pay raise. It's right. just that the following year or two years later. But you can't I, assume that. I mean, so right. and, then, and then the real quick, and then the follow-on recommendation on the voting, you've got six that can vote. Uh, the other five, I, I believe, would have to uh, disclose that they, they have a personal financial interest because it would, it would be implemented while they were still in office. And then the board would use the code, which explains how you go about disclosing potential conflicts of interest. Well, that's actually, the way they would disclose it to their own assembly, which would then right. make the decision correct. Right, and that's the way the code so works. Chris and then Dee. I was just going to say that, that it's been characterized as an assembly vote to extend terms. I think that is a byproduct. The objective is to change the election to uh, enable the turnout. I know we're focusing on, on the, the benefits of, of you know, half a dozen assembly members and whatever that is against a, a billion dollar city budget that is, that is impacted directly by the, and influenced by the school board and the assembly and all those, uh, you know, those benefits that we, we talked about. On, on the other issue, the, there's a prohibition against truncating terms, you know, which, you know, I mean, that would be the other thing, just, okay, let's truncate terms. Based on the, the legal review that happened in 89, it's, it's not possible to truncate terms. So, you know, so that option doesn't exist for, for the body to, to move the election from this next April to November. Thirdly, on the conflict side, the, te the assembly just, we just did a reapportionment. And every 10 years we go through a reapportionment, assembly members sit down and they review boundaries and you know, kind of move the arrows around, try to balance things out. We, we got rid of just about every split precinct in the city, save one. Um, so we've got good alignment on the, but the assembly members routinely vote on issues such as, as uh, reapportionment that have a direct you know, impact on, on you know, whether the boundaries surround their house or not, if you will, or whether their house is included in that assembly district. So, um, you know, and, and like I say, I think the, the and, and I think the, the, the board also, if I understand it, reserves a right, as I think has been discussed earlier, to punt back to the assembly and let the assembly make a call on, on what's a conflict or not. I mean, the, the assembly, the, the body can, I mean, we routinely do that. We have, a, we have a, an assembly member whose wife works for the school di district and he makes an announcement uh, at every vote, you know, because his wife obviously receives a significant income from the Anchorage school district, but he still votes in the school budget. We have another assembly member whose uh, spouse is a, uh, in the fire department, makes that announcement all the time routinely. Significant financial interest, but makes that disclosure uh, routinely. So I, I think the disclosure, I think the public can weigh in, certainly at the ballot box, has been discussed here. And if they think you're making a bad decision, they can they can pull your chain. I mean, they can they can basically vote you out. So I think that that protection exists there. And again, my objective with this with this uh, ordinance is to preserve uh, a high vote, you know, and, and enable a high vote turnout for the uh, next year's election. And the filing doesn't begin for the 2014 election until the end of January or February. So it's it's several months out. 
Well, I should say that um, it seems like the, the ethics board collectively is coming to the conclusion uh, that Mr. Birch's sponsorship as an assembly member who's about to be turned out presents an unmanageable conflict. To add um, what Mr. Strom is uh, suggesting, I think does in involve further uh, expertise and is beyond the scope of this particular meeting. Um, there, there are other legal issues. I mean, Steve, we may come back to that, but I think talk about sleeping on it. That's, um, but it seems that everybody uh, that board members here have expressed that they do believe that at least the sponsorship at this point in time is an unmanageable conflict. Well, I think what David said, and I agree, is any uh, assembly member, when you apply these five uh, criteria, uh, has a conflict, any of the, any of the 11. So at least given the current as proposal. As a current yeah, right. And yeah, I, think right. Maybe, I think that's sort of the consensus right. that we're developing here, that the right. current proposal yeah. is going to create we're pretty systemic, not just for Mr. Birch in terms of sponsorship, pretty systemic conflicts for all assembly members. And, and you're right, at, at some point we can kind of get into what recommendations we want to, you know, we could make to help the assembly see its way right. through it. But uh, it does seem like at least that's where we're at right now yeah, in terms of applying the code. So you have just a few minutes left. So I, I agree with all of you that, um, that you could, you could probably answer some of these questions, yes or no, which you've already done. And leave the recommendations for something that you could sleep on and, and write, but it might be helpful. The, the first question in number one, it does look to me that you've answered that, but what about the second question in number one, the last three sentences there? And, and the first question and the second question in each of the four are the same, right? It's mm -hmm. one, First part sponsorship, the second turned part out. is voting. Okay, so right. as, yeah. as Dr. Kelly out. said, the first one is for a turned out member, and it was sponsorship. And I understood your answer was yes. And then so the second answer would be same assembly member, turned out, um, would they be able to vote on this legislation? No, no, they're so they would, the so again, the answer would be, um, does that em assembly member have a conflict that would prohibit them voting on that legislation, even if it was sponsored by someone else? That's right. And yeah. so I just want you to walk through this for me, if you would please. And, um, and, and my rationale is that Mr. Birch wanted to introduce this at the December 17th assembly meeting. And if you could at least answer, you're, you're saying, I understood you said yes to the second one. So then if you could move on and answer, now answer two and three, Mr. Birch would know what he could do before the 17th. At least he'd have some ideas. As Dee said, there's more research. We need to get your recommendations, probably a written opinion, but you would at least be started. The second one would be the other assembly members that are eligible for another term but aren't termed out. I just, is the I board comfortable proceeding giving verbal yes and no answers on this matrix without a written opinion? I would think, I, I would be very cautious. I would want okay. to do the written opinion and have it vetted and discussed fully before any committed commitment to answers is reached. Well, I would actually say uh, in um, the number three and number four, I hesitate on our first yeah. meeting to yeah. give a verbal. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you started, and I was just trying to yeah. encourage you. I, mean, I, 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 this is, I don't have any problem been, with that advice. I think that, um, I mean, I think from the tone of our conversation, Mr. Birch can certainly understand where we're heading, but I really hesitate to put something out there that's going to be recorded in some way before we've had a chance to put something down in writing. I, I think the sponsorship part is easily resolvable after some discussion and, and some further um, uh, research, but right. the voting part, right. again, I, you know, I'd refer it back to the assembly and, and, and let them deal with conflicts of interest, but that's my view on it. Um, I, I know we're not going to make it 
decisions that and, and that was that brings us back to the question I asked you before the meeting, uh, some of the was, is there somebody else that could sponsor this? You mean Demosky has offered to co-sponsor it in my uh, brief discussions with her, um, and so she's willing to sponsor it. Uh, so that's I mean that's so that would that would still accomplish this without you having a conflict uh, determining determining out. But again, it'd be my intent to vote on it. Yeah. Um, right, right, and that would be, right. and whatever recommendation, my gut feeling was we may punt that, as we usually do, to back to the assembly to let you guys make a decision as to whether or not you can. But I don't know. That, that's I'm pre I'm pre guessing, and I, I'm getting yes, I'm getting nods and shakes of head. So I. And yes. and the question whether or not Ms. Dembowski yeah. has a conflict is it's one not. of your later questions. Which so question you still is that? that would probably be your. Third question. Third. We elected a two This is. What kind of conundrum do they call this? Yes. But, I, but that's a whole other issue that, that I'm not comfortable. I haven't even right. made a decision on whether to punt back to uh, that. That's so. that's something totally different. I, yeah, the situation's unique. I'm not yeah. sure I too would, would punt away on uh, on the conflict that we may want to offer. Well, like I said, I was prejudging. But yeah, so um, right. yeah, we should probably have a, a, um, another meeting now. Um, I'm going to email uh, a draft advisory opinion. And this you guys is laying out some of this. I thought this may be where the conversation would go, and so maybe we can kind of take a look at that, and then our next meeting. We'll think about. Well, our next meeting is not going to be till the third, so 21st or so. After is, so we need to. We may have to have another special meeting uh, next week. Can I ask that a question? Tough to just ask a quick question. Next meeting, meeting is on the 18th. Okay. Is it possible that between now and, and, the, and the next meeting, and I don't know if Assemblyman Birch would be able to answer this question, is it possible that this might change? <laughs> Could the question change for us? Uh, right? I, I, don't, I guess the question is, I don't want to <coughs> spend the time drafting something if, if, right. the, if the proposed is no longer even a question. Well, yeah. Right. I mean, if it's if it's then proposed, if it's then sponsored by somebody else, or if, if the if the effective date is changed, right. I, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, so we're using our time most efficiently. Well, we need to collectively figure out, you know, how best to move forward with, uh, uh, you know, restating, recasting the April 14 election to November of 14, whatever that entails, and you know, if that entails, you know. Uh, the assembly seems, needs to vote on it or whatever, you know. I mean, it just, you know, it, it, it um, but I, I, as far as the substantial changes, I think w the chairman uh, of the assembly indicated having a work session on it, and there's some question about on the, uh, the proposal, I believe, that you have in front of you as uh, positions seated in the, after the middle of January. Um, currently, it's uh, <coughs> really, it's, it's right after the certification election, so that might vary by a month or two. But it's basically the, the question is, um, you know, how to benefit the city, the, the municipality of Anchorage public, the voters, in deferring the April 14 election and subsequent elections to a November, a November. You know, basically it's four to eleven, so seven months, a seven month deferral, uh, savings with consolidation. You know, I mean, the, all that, all that's. You know, you need to extend your meeting again. Though. Well, do we not extend to 11:30? But no, can we set a time for our next special meeting before Tony leaves? I, I, I'm the one that posed the questions, and the questions were posed in a manner that they were subject to repetition. So the questions that you have will not change. Okay. So they require a written response. I mean, I believe they require some kind of formal but response, unless uh, unless the uh, proposed uh, ordinance changes. But I'm, I'm asking you the question right. because the right. ordinance could change, but it's still capable of repetition, right. whether it's this year or next year or whatever. Right. So the questions as posed remain. They, those questions will not, and those are from me, whether the right. ordinance changes or right. not, these are the questions. So these are the questions are date specific. And, and they the, are. The date the ordinance changes. Then, then we'll so we start we over. So we'll ask these for are questions before you now. And, and basically, then, then it would be the clerk's office position to ask us another set of questions based Correct. on the facts. But, but you're asking. This is a. This requires a formal response to a formal 
question. Whether it changes or not, it means that there would be an additional response, but not an elimination of the current one. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. How about scheduled next I week, Dave? I know you don't have any idea. I have the slightest idea of what I want to do next week, but um, I will you're, do everything you're next finals week. Uh, week. It's finals week. I'm pretty wide open though. Monday between 10 and 1 is is out, but uh, otherwise the rest of the week I, I can make it work. Week. How about you, Ted? You still there? Yes, uh, any day <clears throat> any day next week is good for me except Monday. I can't meet Monday, but any other day is fine. That's the only day I could meet next week. <laughs> Can you call in? I'm at a conference, so no. <laughs> and your next regular meeting is Not till when, the 18th. Do, when do you leave? Uh, the 10th. I'll be back on the 13th. And I what date is the 10th? Tuesday. My calendar is pretty open. I could do it the so following week. Set it. Well, but I, I think they're trying to do something so they can have a work session and everything. Well, we would oh, yeah, like to introduce it on the 17th. Yes, I could meet on the 16th. When, oh. When's your work session? Do you know? Uh, no, I. It, the the process on ordinance would be introduced on the 17th, uh, with the objective being that the chair would <coughs> excuse me, cold, uh, would establish a, a work session uh, with the uh, elections committee, and then uh, it could be up for consideration, public hearing, and a vote in early January well ahead of the filing date for the uh, 14 offices. Well, then we could better meet if you wanted to introduce it on the 17th? Yes, 17th. Well, we better meet before, for, for sure before then, and if we can manage it, we should try to meet like before, the day before. Right. I, I, I my, try time is, week my time is open. I, what, I, about, what, what about, I'm sorry to ask, what about tomorrow? I could do tomorrow. tomorrow. You might not be able to meet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> What's the due date? Uh, today. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Looks late. Well, uh, what's the due date? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> um, He's not sticking to his trial. No. <laughs> I, you know what? I can meet tomorrow. I can't meet tomorrow. Yeah, I can meet tomorrow. Yeah, I can meet tomorrow. Tomorrow morning? Yeah. I can't meet before 10 o'clock. Well, 10 o'clock can we start today? 10 o'clock? We have, we have a consensus for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? Can I notice it from 10 to noon? Sure. And then if you finish early, you're done early, but then you don't have to extend. Yeah. All right. That gives you enough time to notice? That this would be, be a yeah. This so would be a be Okay. Don't yeah. adjourn this meeting. Just continue it. Okay. All right. Can I, so I don't know if I can make it at 10. How about, How about 11? 11? I can make 11. I, okay. I've got something either at 9 or 10. I can't remember what. How about 11 to 1? 11 works a little bit. 11 works yeah, better, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I know I can make it. All right. Fine. So, we're okay. we'll, so I need a motion to continue our so meeting. Second. second. Starting at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So moved. Except second. second. Hear any objections? No objections. No objections? 